Next on BYUSN, is the quarterback factory back at BYU with Jaron Hall as the next elite product? Elite, huh? Southern Illinois is on the 2024 football schedule, what it looks like now. And why in the world would BYU play in Laramie in 2024? That's a fantastic question. G5 road games, your boy's not a fan. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, September 28th, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Laramie event coordinator Jerem Jordan. I've seen two games in Laramie. And that's two too many. It's two more than I've seen them. Yeah, one was plenty. 05 and 09. Uh, one just as a fan, one as a, a media member. And Harvey Unga, after the fireside on Friday night in 09, got left behind. So <laughs> Scott Hill and I took him back to the hotel. And uh, now he's back at BYU. How are you going to leave Harvey behind? How does the all-time leading rusher at that soon at that time get left behind? And uh, will there be another game in Laramie? Okay, we will break it down. Also coming up on the program today, Scott Gerard, voice of the Aggies, one of our uh, favorites, will join us to tell us what happened to Utah State football, how they looking going into this game with BYU tomorrow. Tomorrow! We got a Thursday game, baby. Brayden Cosper talks to Spencer about his first touchdown at BYU and what he's been through to get there. The newest Deep Blue featuring former Cougar great defensive lineman and defensive analyst Jan Jorgensen. You don't want to miss that. And if you've seen it already, you want to watch it again. And who's paying the field storm fine from the Big 12 next year? But first, headlines. Let's welcome game day eve, shall we? Number 19 BYU football hosting the Utah State Aggies tomorrow night at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Question on every BYU fan's mind is, will star receivers Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney play tomorrow night? No, no, I think, I think if... We'll have to see on Thursday, but if this was a Saturday game, I think he would have been fine. Okay, uh, Gunnar Romney, we keep hoping this week is the week. Is this week the week? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say anything until it happens. So, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think we're closer than we've ever been. But I think I said that last week, too. So, <laughs> uh, you know, eventually someone's going to make me right. Okay, let's clarify that. Puka Nakua, if the game were on Saturday, would be available on Saturday? Wow. Gunnar Romney himself said he's playing. And I Gunner, don't think we need to be at – we're good. Gunnar Romney he's says playing. he's playing. <laughs> Speaking of receivers, even if those two don't play, Keanu Hill coming off an epic performance, named Honorable Mention Player of the Week for the Earl Campbell Award after that dominant five-catch, 160-yard, two-touchdown performance against Wyoming. BYU football adds FCS school Southern Illinois. Salukis as the opener on August 31st, 2024. Previously, this was Nevada. It'll be the first matchup between the two. Utah Tech moved to 2026 as a potential opener as well. More on the 2024 schedule coming up. Huge news for Jerem Jordan's BYU Sports Nation fantasy football yeah. team. Because New York Jets head coach Robert Sala says Zach Wilson is cleared and return is expected on Sunday. Uh, Adam Schefter added, barring any setbacks, he will go against yep. the Steelers. This is great news for Zach, for Zach Wilson fans, and again, for Jerem's fantasy football team. He is already in my starting lineup. Just put him in there, okay? Men's cross country moves up to number one. Nice. The women move up to number five. How about that? The next meet for both is the Nutty Comb Wisconsin Invitation on October 14th and Casey Klinger's West Coast Conference Runner of the Week after taking seventh in the Cowboy Jamboree, where they also ran with a time of 23-30. BYU women's basketball will receive $100,000 from South Carolina following the Gamecocks opting out of a two-game series against the Cougars. So BYU will now open the season against Colorado State on November 8th. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. All right, What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Next in line on the quarterback factory, uh, what do you call that, assembly line, shall we call it, Jerem? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the assembly line apparently is now belonging to Jaron Hall, who in a lot of ways has become the primary storyline. Not BYU football taking on Utah State. It's, it's about Jaron Hall right Is it now. Utah State this week? I didn't even know. <laughs> At field goals, okay? This is a Seahawks uh, fan account. SB Nation. SB Nation fan account. Goals, like a C. Okay? Goal. And we're going to set up a number of tweets here just to, to drive home the emphasis that Jaron Hall is the story. Field goals says, show of hands, how many of you watching more college football this year with a specific focus on the quarterbacks? because the Seahawks are in the market. Seahawks! Brock Heward, 
broadcaster, former NFL and college quarterback, said, watch, Seattle radio personality mm -hmm. as well. Watch Jaron Hall at BYU. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop there, Jaron. He did the Oregon game. How about Lewis Riddick? One of the very best players in college football, one of the very best people in college football. Don't wait until the draft process begins to learn about why this man will be playing on Sundays in the NFL. Thursday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN. See for yourself. He is the analyst on the game, by the way. This week. Indeed, he is. At McShay13, yes, that McShay, Todd McShay of ESPN, says the clear-cut top three quarterbacks in the 2023 class are C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, and Will Levis. Tyler Van Dyke and Anthony Richardson are loaded with traits but have disappointed. Talking to NFL scouts, these QBs are rising fast. BYU's Jaron Hall, Hendon Hooker, and Jake Hayner from Fresno State. Jerem, with the rise of Jaron Hall and now all of this national attention being paid to him, is the quarterback factory back at Brigham Young University? It feels like it's going that direction. I'm not going to say it's back uh, quite yet, but I feel like if Jaron Hall is a first-round pick, then perhaps the wheels are now spinning, right? That, that the assembly line has begun again. Because if, if Jaron Hall throws a pass in the NFL next year, that means you're going to have three BYU quarterbacks, if you will. Taysom Hill, a hybrid, of course. Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall. That's pretty good. Uh, there are schools nearby this one that have had two of the last in this century. And BYU, assuming that Jaron goes to the NFL and plays, would have three in the league now. I mean, that's pretty notable. Uh, and what Jaron Hall's been able to do as he waited his time is pretty significant. He's playing at such a, a high level. He is an elite quarterback in college football right now. He's one of the top ten quarterbacks, which is incredible. The way he takes care of the ball, as I mentioned, one of, out of every 87 throws. Wild. Okay, and we talked about um, what, yeah, who's saying what. NFL scouts are definitely on, his, uh, on the radar Jaron's on their radar. Yes. Aaron Roderick said as much on Coordinator's Corner on Monday. Listen to this. Yeah, I've said this before. I wouldn't trade him for anyone. I think he's playing as well as any quarterback in the country. And, um, you know, I don't know if the media people notice, but I, I know the NFL scouts are noticing how he's playing. Um, you know, I, and I expect him to keep getting better because we're, we're getting healthier and we're sort of just hitting our stride right now. I think offensively we're starting to find out a lot about our team. He's, he's on the radar, clearly, for a lot of people. It came off a tremendous game, 211 passer rating, tremendous, four touchdowns, no picks, BYU wins. He's exposed in a great way on ESPN. And then uh, Utah State Thursday night, that's a great exposure game as well on a Thursday night. And uh, you keep it going because you have Notre Dame and Arkansas coming up as well. Okay, so you're not quite ready to declare not, that not yet. BYU is officially back in the quarterback factory if, business. If he's a first or second rounder, I think yes. And, like, how, how would we define the Spence because – is it – we throw in Taysom Hill because he's been within kind of the Kalani Stucky sure. era. Does it require an, another guy next year to really feel like that? Like Be a consecutive sequence. Because the factory really was 79 to 85. Like that was – it was Mark Wilson, Jim McMahon, Steve Young, Robbie Bosco. And then you look backwards, you go, wait a minute, Virgil Carter and Gary Scheid and Gifford Nielsen oh. were awesome. And then after that, it's Ty, it's Sark, it's Doman, it's Beck, Hall, Hill, yes. Wilson, Hall. To me, that's like – the group. There are others on the outside of that that were really good too, Walsh, Federick, and others. But the list that I just gave is like, those guys are in a certain class at BYU. They're part of that factory. The key part of that is they all came immediately one after another. There was no drop-off. Not from. It literally went from third-round NFL pick Gary Scheide to third-round NFL draft pick Gifford Nelson, to first-rounder Mark Wilson, to first-rounder Jim McMahon, to first-rounder Steve Young, to third-round draft pick Robbie Bosco. And sometimes that took, like, two or three years, that process. Like, Steve, when he takes over for Jim... But the starting quarterbacks were all... There was no nobody in between is what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, so the process took a little bit yeah. longer. 75, it's Gifford's in the mix with someone else. I mean, eventually it becomes Gifford. Okay, so yeah. it, it feels yeah. more sequential... Right? Yeah. So when we look at now, like literally back to back is Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall with a little bit of Baylor Romney mixed in because of injuries to Jaron right. Hall. But the two primary starting yeah. quarterbacks sure. back to back have been Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall. So I just need to see a little bit more because we're talking of about what, Jaron or the next guy? But the next guy. Okay. Like back to back is really nice.
Back to back, in my mind, based on BYU's history, does not qualify for quarterback factory. Do you need so you, you have to have in a row. At, least, at least three in a row? And what would that third person need to do? They'd have to be an NFL draft pick, probably at Ooh. least. Yes. This this yes. is a high. This is high what standard. this is why BYU was tabbed the quarterback factory at the height of the and, Lavelle Edwards era because they were putting elite level quarterbacks into the NFL every single one of them. Okay, that, that it is it is what it is. You're right. It's a it's a super high standard, and in my mind, it's it's okay. It deserves to be a super high standard. Right now, like, does it get better than back to back? First round draft picks. If Jaron Hall is a first round draft pick, like that's that's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets in the modern era. This is not the 70s, 80s, no, it's, or even. No, it's 90s. even tougher now. Yes, and what th- these guys are doing it when everyone else does a similar passing game. Like BYU was at the forefront of the evolution of chucking it and throwing it 40 to 50 times in the game. People have caught up to that, right? BYU's competitive advantage went away a long time. Now they have different competitive advantages. Spence, I almost think that's too high of a standard because BYU, like Oklahoma, yeah. Like when you it doesn't spe- matter when where you're they're drafted. Heisman it doesn't matter and- where they're drafted. I mean, there are seven rounds. Just get a third consecutive quarterback drafted somewhere into the National Football League, and then I think we're talking about yeah, the quarterback factory. It's back. It's yeah. Is it back? Did I'm not talking first leave? rounder. I'm just saying like you could go in the seventh round, but if you follow Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall, and then you have like a sixth or seventh round quarterback drafted. That still qualifies. And that could be two or three years down the road. Absolutely. We don't need it to be the next year. No, absolutely. I, to me, that's almost too high a standard. I almost wonder is, can BYU continue to add to the factory? Because guess what? Certain products are distributed from certain factories that miss, but they're known for, oh, they've produced this, 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 and this. This is a great producer of X. You could have that for a certain production company with TV or films mm. or whatever. Like, like, Marvel is a movie factory, is it not? But they're not hitting on everything right now. Does that make sense? So BYU, like, Taysom Hill is in that mix, even though you had Tanner Mangum between them. Love Tanner. He's not in, in that, like, elite company of quarterbacks, right? You skip some here and there. We're not talking about Sean Covey and Bob Jensen and Brett Ingeman. And there are certain ones that were good, but they don't fit into that space. Steve if B- Sarkeesian wasn't an NFL quarterback. Right. Sark is in the factory to me. He's in that group. See, and so guys like John Beck and Max Hall and Brandon Doman have something over Sark. They played in the NFL. Sark but Sark has a 14-1 and one Cotton Bowl win. Like, that's you, you could argue the second-best season in BYU history. I think we do, right? Interesting. So there are certain criteria there to qualify. It doesn't always include one thing, though. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, you know who does believe that the quarterback factory is back? We've collaborated with our guy, Joe Testador. Joe, tell the people, is, is, the, is the QB factory back at BYU? The quarterback factory is back, folks. Okay, okay. Is it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, back. Joe said it, uh, so <laughs> there you go. And let's discuss that later because, yeah, I think there's a lot of nuance to, like, how do you get into that and what that means. Okay. Maybe it's just making an NFL roster. You don't have to be To me, it's draft not about NFL success, per se. It's about BYU success. Factory. Yeah. Okay. okay, topic two. BYU announces Southern Illinois' the football opener August 31st, 2024. Get your season tickets now. Just kidding. The Cougars also have a game at Utah scheduled the next week and at Wyoming the next week. East Carolina is scheduled for October 19th. It's not happening. Nevada's TBA, perhaps those two get pushed or canceled. We'll see. It would seem those, um, that's the case. What do you think of the 24th schedule as currently constituted? I feel like and I'm really focusing just on those first three. I don't think ECU and Nevada are going to be on schedule. I feel like there are still, there's still more shuffling here. And, and I know that we talked about the Wyoming game, and Tom Homo addressing the Wyoming game when he was asked specifically about it uh, on the BYU Sports Radio Network. Yeah, like, because Wyoming obviously came to Provo. BYU has a return game scheduled to go to Laramie. I'm wondering if that game's going to happen. Even though Tom said, and I quote, it is a good game. It is a game we should be playing. To me, that, and Laramie, doesn't, why? that does not mean that the game absolutely is going to be played. Like, yeah, we should be playing. Guess what? BYU should be playing the game against Boise State. And BYU should be playing the game against should. you know Utah State, right? Oh, we should be. It's a good game. Yeah, they're good games. We should be. I don't know. I, I just feel like there's too much shuffling. BYU needs to guarantee at least two home non-conference games every season. In there's opinion. only one there. To guarantee that yeah. they have six, if not seven, home games over the course of a season. Yeah. Okay, so if there's only if one, eight. if there's only one in 2024, then are we positive that 
that year the Big 12 will give BYU five home games and they'll only play four on the road? That's what it smells like, but I'm with you in that I don't want that game. I don't think BYU is going to play that Wyoming. game. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, and if BYU it buys do- it up. If it does happen, then somehow BYU is going to like try and manufacture two other home games. Utah's a road game. Yeah, that's Wyoming's happening. Wyoming's a road game. But we heard that BYU is supposed to play Nevada, and that was announced relatively recently, last year. BYU never announced that one. That was uh, a Nevada uh, media outlet reporting that, having obtained the contract. So BYU's never said we're playing Nevada, okay. to my knowledge. So if you are Tom Homo, if you are – BYU staffer. I, I just got to pay right. Okay. Home game. Hey, would you not go with the home game against Nevada and a home FCS and then play the road game against Utah depends and then get ready for the Big 12? Depends if Nevada has September 14th available. If they don't, then you can't do it. It's a September 14th situation. Now. Okay, so maybe maybe Nevada is like, okay, we're, we're backing out and BYU is in a tough spot. Do they have to play no, they're not. Wyoming at that No, they're point? not. They just you, play a G5 at home. Do you have to? It's not well, tough. Do you have to play Wyoming home at that point to honor the agreement? Like, are, are, is, they pr- I wonder is Tom if they in a position that. where he's like, ah, I feel like I need to pay off this quote-unquote debt? You are a P5 now at this point. You don't owe a G5 anything, ever. I don't want BYU to play, I think, any G5 road games. You still could if you want. You could do a Utah State. I don't think you need a Boise State. Well, here's the thing. Sometimes but you don't have dro- to now. Sometimes things are going to drop out, and you're kind of under the gun, and there are not many, op- like, there are not many options. So uh, is, this an, is this a scenario where there aren't many options in 2024? Like, you have to go to Wyoming? Or, guess what? You're a P5. You pay someone to come to Provo. Maybe it's a G5 that you pay to come to Provo. Like, you are a big dog now mm. in 2024. The mentality needs to change. You're not a road show going across the country to appease fans and ESPN. You are a P5 trying to win a conference championship. you got to schedule to win, and that is to not play G5s on the road almost ever, maybe ever. I lo- By the way, I looked at a couple schools. Texas Tech's playing a ton of G5s on the road in the next few years. Washington does not. Michigan State does not. Uh, Iowa State's playing two. So some do, some do not. I would prefer not to. It's only one. And again, and it's, only, and it, it's the only one part scheduled, keep, by the way. Is it part of keeping like, your word on an agreement? There's something. Contra- every there's something contract to, can I be know, broken, including temple that. ceilings. I know. There's, every it, contract. Doesn't make it difficult. Doesn't make it not difficult, though. It's difficult, right? It can be tough. Sometimes you don't want <laughs> it's it. It's not hard to get out of a contract. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, there's. It's not hard at all. There's history between BYU and Wyoming, too, that's factoring into this. That's why I don't want to play in Laramie, <laughs> because of that history. Our question of the day, not about scheduling or Southern Illinois, who is going to come to Provo on August 31st of 2024. Uh, But it's about maybe the quarterback that's going to be in play (laughs) for BYU in 2023 and 2024 as we discuss the quarterback factory. Is it officially back now with the national emergence of Jaron Hall? Yes or no? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. Ben Peterson on Twitter says, I think BYU is getting pretty close. Jaron Hall needs to be drafted, and then his replacement needs to do well. It is a really high bar that was set previously by a set of factory quarterbacks. And we disagree on, like, does it have to be consecutive or not? I don't. It just has to be, like, several in a group of years. And right now the back-to-back part is making us think, hey, maybe those wheels are spinning again. But it's hard, it's hard to create a, and have a quarterback that's at the same level as these two dudes. Like, this is a special time right now. Yeah. Enjoy it. You had a lull from 85 until Detmer won the Heisman in 90. Then John Walsh, does he qual- He let in this? He's Sarkeesian. just out for me. Okay. So, yeah, how we much, do you, how, against how much do you State. put into the sequential necessity of this thing? Yeah, once you say uh, sequential necessity, then I'm out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Join us tomorrow. <laughs> Join us tomorrow for BYU and Utah State. We'll get you ready for the game. BYU Sports Station game day. 6 Eastern time as the guys get you ready for the game on BYU TV and the app. The voice of the Utah State Aggies, Scott Gerrard, joins us next. Hey. To discuss what's going on in Logan. Had some struggles. But, again, this is a rivalry game. Nothing is guaranteed. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group. Serving Utah since 1968.
Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. state rivalries the battle for the old wagon wheel. that thing's we are so live heavy live in studio b with your day-to-day -day byu oh. sports play-by-play -play. i'm spencer linton alongside jerem jordan i'm sure when i attempted to lift that and i did a little bit that i will have a hernia now probably like seven or eight years from now because of that moment when i lifted the wagon oh my wheel. gosh you're gonna need so much seven up good <laughs> gosh if you know you know joining us now over Zoom is the voice of the Utah State Aggies, uh, one of our good friends, Scott Gerard. Daddy G. A fantastic job, radio personality in Salt Lake City for KSL Sports Zone. Scotty G, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's always a pleasure to catch up with two of my favorite people on the planet. Hey, before we get started, I have a quick story. Can I share you a quick story? Yeah, with please. You really quick? Yeah. So uh, I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Idaho, a little town called Declo. And about two or three months ago, I get a DM from my high school principal. And I have not talked to this guy in like 25 years. And he reaches out and he goes, hey, just want to let you know, really proud of the work you're doing. It's really awesome. I'm thinking, oh, that's cool. He's like, listens to the show with me and Hans, or he's listening to the play-by-play. -play. He's like, whenever I see you pop up on a great show like BYU Sports Nation, I know you're doing good work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, to Mike Matthews up there in Declo, Idaho. Let's, roll in. Let's talk some cool tags. Yes. Hey, sorry, sorry that it wasn't exactly what you wanted to do. But shout out to Mike. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, you bring up Hans. So, what? let's just throw some heat out early on in this conversation and keep it rolling. Okay. Is, it, is it harder to work with Hans Olsen or Ben Bagley, Scott? Uh, both had strengths. Um, both uh, had different challenges that you had to work through. Uh, ben certainly uber focused. Hands has the attention span of a hummingbird, and so you kind of have, <laughs> have to corral him a little bit. Um, there was a great story though when we were there was a Utah State BYU game. It was the really cold game oh, yeah. day after Thanksgiving. What was that 15? 17, 18? And uh, and we're standing there, and Ben was not as um, svelte as he is now, and. Uh, and and um, there was a play that mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't remember the running back came out of bounds and hands moves Ben over in front and uses Ben. as like a human <laughs> shield um, as the play was going out of bounds and frankly, probably protected all of us. But I'm afraid Ben took the brunt of that uh, of, of that hit. So, yeah, hands is. Hans is a great dude, but Hans will sacrifice friends and family to make sure he stays safe. <laughs> yes. Hey, at the end of the day, that's the character revealed there for a sec. Uh, okay, yeah. let's talk Utah State football. Certainly, this is a team that won the Mountain West, finished top 25. It was a banner year. That was a big win for BYU to get that done in Logan last year. Now Utah State comes in reeling at 1-3 and three and having lost to Weber State and UNLV. What changed with this team? You know, it's interesting because you think, okay, the coaching staff comes back, quarterback comes back, and everything should just be lock and step and ready to go. And there's been struggles in terms of 
losing key players. A guy like Devin Tompkins, who led the nation for a good chunk of the year last year in receptions and receiving yards, uh, he leaves. They lose their top three receivers. They leave their top tight end. A guy on the defensive side like Nick Henniger, uh, Justin Rice, those were all huge key losses. Uh, the thing that surprised me the most, though, is the receivers they brought in via the program or the transfer portal, I kind of felt like would be able to transition nicely into this offense. And that has not been the case. This offense has been uh, has really struggled. And I think the knee injury to Logan uh, Bonner, who suffered an ACL tear in the uh, bowl game, he's come back and he's tried to fight through it, but he's not quite there. The, just does, the timing's not there. The receivers haven't quite figured out this offense and it just hasn't clicked. And it feels like every week, it's like, okay, this is the week it might break out. And, it, and it, you saw a little bit of it against UNLV, who's a much improved team, uh, but that's still a team that Utah State probably should be beating and not losing by 10 at home to UNLV. So there's a lot of things that I think people are concerned about for good reason. I think we eventually feel like it's going to rectify itself, but it certainly isn't quite there yet. Scott, with the struggles of Logan Bonner, and uh, yeah, tough to come back from an ACL. Oh my gosh. And you said he's just not himself. At what point does it become Cooper Lega time? Cooper Lega, of course, a great Orem high product, and uh, it was a big get for Utah State. Is it this week? If not, is it in the near future that Cooper Lega takes over and plays some quarterback? Well, there was a lot of conversation before that UNLV game, and Blake Anderson said that Logan would be on a short leash. Uh, he did go out and throw five interceptions. Two of them were end, one was end of half, one was end of game. So you kind of take a look at that um, and, and kind of, you know, brush that aside a bit. Uh, coach said two of them were on Logan Bonner, um, but there wasn't a moment where it really felt like, okay, the reason BYU or Utah State struggling in this game is because of Logan Bonner. Uh, I do think they'll try to stick with him as long as they can, barring another injury that, you know, who knows it may pop up somewhere along the line. I think they'll try to stick with Logan as long as they can. But if if you see that offense continue to stall and you look at it with because of bad reads or because of bad uh, decisions out there on the field, then, yeah, he'll go to Cooper Lega, and it wouldn't surprise me if Cooper gets the shot here uh, in the uh, near future. They roll both of them out to this huddle after a kickoff, and then they run to the sideline. Are you looking for who the quarterback is every offensive series start now? Uh, certainly was that way against UNLV. Yeah, you know, I got the binoculars there in the booth, and because you'll see, you'll see Cooper warming up on the sideline, thinking, "Oh, oh, here's going to be the, it's going to be his drive." There was a moment in that first half where Logan Bonner threw back-to-back -back interceptions, and and you're thinking, "Okay, this might be the time they they make the they make the pull," and they put Logan out there, and Logan takes it right down the field and scores a touchdown uh, right before the end of the half, and and it probably saved. Uh, or at least earn him the right to finish that game. Now, going into the BYU game, that's going to be another, you know, I'm sure that they'll try to give Logan every opportunity, but make no mistake, if there's any other issues uh, and any issues we're not aware of at this time, uh, that, that Cooper will get a shot. Scott Gerard, the voice of the Utah State Aggies, is on BYU Sports Nation. We so often hear, hey, throw out the records, all of the story. This is a rivalry game. It's just about pure emotion. Are you buying into that this week, given the struggles of Utah State? Maybe they rally the troops. Maybe they come into Provo and they do something special. Like, does it, does it matter what Utah State has done to this point when it comes to the rivalry game and the last one for the foreseeable future against BYU? I think there's a lot of emotion, sure. And you look, like these guys, a lot of these guys played on the same high school team, played against each other in high school. Some, some of them are even related to each other. So, yeah, that's going to matter. But at the end of the day, talent usually wins out. And Utah State is a talented football team. It's not clicking yet, but if Utah State makes this game close or, or, or wins this game, it's because Utah State played really well and they've got some talent on that team. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a little, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm a little cynical on the whole emotions play out. Look, Utah State, for a lot of years, always wanted to beat BYU, and more often than not, BYU beat Utah State because BYU, more often than not, was the more talented team. And I think you can want to play as badly as you want, but at the end of the day, usually the better team finds a way to win that game. And so Utah State certainly has a, 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 a tough hill to climb against a really talented, really special BYU team that's playing great football. And so if Utah, but Utah State's talented. They've got good players on that team. Uh, they've got a defense that's, you know, ranked seventh in the country and tackles for losses per game. I think that's going to be an interesting aspect to see that BYU offensive line against a much smaller but very quick, very athletic 
uh, defensive front seven for Utah State. So there's elements to this, this game that Utah State can challenge BYU. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's going to be it's going to be a tough one for the Aggies for sure. Now, I'm being told that Declo is not in the middle of nowhere. It's eight miles east of Burley. It has its own exit on the freeway. That's from a native Idahoan who is challenging your claim of Declo being in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. Your thoughts? Okay. Uh, a Google population Declo, Idaho. It's 298. <laughs> I had a graduating high school class of 65. Um, and so... You know, yes, it is a technical suburb of Burley, which is, by the way, population 10,000. And look, nobody's going to stand up for the good reputation of Declo, Idaho, more than this guy. But still, geographically, it's not really <laughs> centered in the, uh, you know, in a bustling metropolis, if you will. It has its own exit on the freeway. I, that's all I need to know. Okay. Hey, that's Scott. Pretty good. Okay, fair I, enough. I imagine that the pride of Declo, Idaho, is not too happy with the idea of BYU football and basketball on the men's side going away for the foreseeable future. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on BYU and Utah State not playing football until who knows when and the basketball game not happening in the future? Well, okay, football is one thing, and I totally get football, especially if you're playing a nine game. Uh, conference schedule in the Big 12. That makes sense to me. Um, although, if you know, if BYU's playing in Laramie in 2024, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But whatever. I, yeah. I, I agree with you guys. I think eventually that thing will get worked out. Um, I So football makes sense. I get that. Basketball, I still think you should, you know, there, there can be ways in which you can play that game. But I also understand that Tom Homo's in an interesting bind. Uh, look, you're it's a new world. You're not exactly sure what you're uh, what you're working with there, I understand that it's it's you're you're navigating some waters you're not completely familiar with. I would hope when the dust settles, especially on the basketball side, and BYU kind of settles into the rhythm of the Big 12 and knows what to do and how to schedule and things like that, that we can see Utah State back on the schedule. Look, it's me for me selfishly. Not only is the play-by-play -play guy for Utah State, but also mm -hmm. a radio show host in Salt Lake City. Rivalries are fun. Rivalries make great topic, great content. It's fun to talk about. BYU and Utah, BYU and Utah State, and Utah and BYU. Those are fun conversation points. It makes our job easier. So, yeah, I'm being a little selfish. I would like these games to be played if possible. But I'm also a realist, and I understand that BYU's got to find a way to work through a new world they're living in in the Big 12. Scott, you are a class act. We appreciate the time, as always. Uh, safe travels down to Provo for the game tomorrow night. And hopefully our fans in Decla are watching to see you uh, con your budding career continue on BYU Sports I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm a try-hard guy. You know I'm scrappy. So hopefully good things continue to come my way. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Scott Gerard, voice of the Utah State Aggies. I love him. He's so personable and fantastic. He's the best. <laughs> okay, after further review, it breaks down the X's and O's like nowhere else. How did the Cougars overcome Wyoming? What's coming up against Utah State? It is on demand on the BYU TV app and BYUSN.com. And the lengthy lead up to Braden Cosper's first career touchdown, and a memorable one in the final seconds of the first half. Hear from him next on BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Football in Utah is all about the rivalries. Red, Ooh. quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. For Mountain America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No. Mobile phone protection. Tell the hell. You're going to need that when we're done. I heard that. Let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want it 
promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Home is just about to get a whole lot happier. So you've been living with no furniture for about two months. Well, we're about to change that for you. Watch as helpful folks lend a hand to those in need. See them refurbish and replenish homes all over the world. Caitlin left her house when she was 13, and now she's finally home. With all kinds of shows to explore on the BYU TV app, you're sure to find loads your family can watch together. Stream them all for free. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on all of the social media platforms. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. You know who uh, kind of flies under the radar as a guy who has gone through a lot of injuries and just kept at it is Braden Cosper. We often forget about that. Braden Cosper working hard to get his first touchdown. It's been a long time coming. He did so. I spoke with him recently, BYU Sports Nation, all access, one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Braden Cosper. Braden, let's start with your first career touchdown catch as a BYU Cougar in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And apparently scoring touchdowns uh, for the first time happens right before halftime between you and Trace Roberts. Is that a thing? Um, yeah, we just got a little, you know, we've actually had it in the game plan for a few weeks now. And so I've been looking forward to running it, but we haven't really gotten in that, you know, that low red where we, where we would call it. But um, this week we did. And um so it was nice to, after all those reps in practice, like finally gets called and you finally just get to execute what you've been practicing all, you know, for the past few weeks. And uh, yeah, just kind of went out there, did what I've been practicing, didn't overcomplicate it and uh, was able to make the play. What was that moment and experience like for you to score a touchdown for the first time in Lavelle Edwards Stadium? It's amazing, you know, especially I think, you know, I've, I've been injured, you know, all these years and I've always dreamed about, you know, running things over in my head, like making that play and getting a touchdown. And so it was like such a relief and excitement. Um, just felt super grateful to be able to have that opportunity. Moving forward, the wide receiver room, not only have you proved that it's one of the deepest position groups on this BYU team, but they're still concerned that, you know, guys like Puka are hurt again. Gunner hasn't played all season. Chase Roberts didn't see the field much on Saturday night and was in street clothes for the second half. So what's the dynamic of the wide receiver room like right now with, you know, so many question marks around injuries? You know, I think, uh, you know, we always want those guys healthy. I, I mean, those are great players. Um, we love having those guys in the room and, and it only makes our team better when they're all healthy. But, you know, I think the mindset has been and it will continue to be, you know, next man up and come in and make plays. And, and we're all confident we, that we can do that. Um, you know, no one's you know, overstressing, like all these guys are injured. Um, we'll get these guys back. Um, we'll continue to step up and make plays. And then we'll be really have a, an unstoppable air attack when we're all healthy and, and all playing. So what's it like to play with a quarterback like Jaron Hall, who seemingly never turns the ball over and has just what it seems like a knack for taking the risk, the right risk at the right time and always hitting the big play. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great feeling when, uh, as an offense, really, not just as a receiver, to to have a quarterback who's such a great leader, who's always so calm, you know, even when things aren't going our way. Um, you know, it's always reassuring to look at look at your quarterback and know, like, hey, we're going to be fine. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a joy, you know, to be able to play at someone who plays at such a high level like Jaron. Um, so I'm just, you know, I'm grateful, and we all trust him. Coaches trust him. Everybody trusts him. Um, so it's it's a blessing for sure. What's his demeanor like on the field in a stressful situation? The same Jaron that you'd get in the locker room on a Monday. Like he's just super calm. You know, he's he's almost in dad mode still. Like he's such a dad. He's just confident. He's you know, he's got like just a wise dude. Like that's how I would describe him. 
As you prepare for Utah State in a Thursday night game, what changes in your schedule as you lead up to that showdown with the Aggies early in the week? Uh, just, I think the biggest thing is film study, you know, started after the game um, on Saturday. Like, we usually have a, a film schedule that we follow. Um, and so I think it's, it's always important for us to jump on the film, get ahead in the film, uh, get the personnel, look at what they're doing on defense. And then practices, we don't get as many practices, but um, we'll get close to the same number of reps as we do in a normal practice week. And so getting the film study and then applying that in practice. So not too big of a change. It's just got to get your, your mind and body ready for an for earlier game. The Wyoming game kind of feels like a good precursor for the Utah State game because they're both kind of long established rivalries, old Mountain West Conference uh, teams. So what does what does a game against Wyoming and, and the struggles it, you know, your team went through at times during that contest do to help you prepare for what what is seeming like a sneaky, tough rivalry game on Thursday night? Yeah, I think you said it, um, you know, tough. It's going to be tough. You, Wyoming's a tough team. They play discipline, and I think Utah State's going to be the same. Uh, they're going to play us tough. Uh, they'd love nothing more than to come to, a, you know, our home home field and beat us, and they're going to give it give us their best shot. So I think it was good for us to you know, face some adversity against a tough team like that and be able to push through that, and I think it's going to be um, another tough, tough game uh, this Thursday. Uh, Braden, uh, before we wrap up, just wanted just to be clear because there have been so many injuries in the wide receiver room and going through your injury history, you're you're good to play, right? You're feeling good. I feel great, man. I feel great. It's nice to not be the one injured. So I'm oh my gonna, gosh. I'm enjoy that. That is that's some of the best news I've heard in a while. Okay, that you are healthy, you are back and and ready to contribute. Uh, we look forward to watching you play against Utah State on Thursday night. Uh, in full health and keep uh, crushing it as a wide receiver BYU, man. Thanks for the time. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate you. Braden Cost for BYU Sports Nation, all access one-on-one. -on -one. Now I should add um, that there's more to that conversation. So I would strongly encourage all of you, especially if, if you love BYU football, you need, you need to find out more about Braden. He goes through specifics of his injury history in the full conversation available on YouTube right now. He's it gone through a lot. unbelievable what he's gone if through. If you don't watch that, you're not a fan of BYU Multiple season-ending injuries he's overcome to, to catch that first touchdown pass. Crazy. And he was ready. How about, how about that? He's fourth in catches, third in yards on this team. I would not have guessed that before this season. He is ready for the moment contributing in that loaded group of receivers, yeah. which is awesome. Okay, get the inside scoop with the head coach, Kalani Stake, on BYU Football's Kalani Stake. It's on demand. Harris the Chance was the guest. Fun conversation there. Keanu Hill in the film room and much more. It's on demand on BYUSN.com. Up next, the path of Jan Jorgensen's return to BYU and how he navigated an unbelievably tough last year as a parent. Deep Blue is next. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-size truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. 
If you could write a letter to your younger self, what would you say? Ah! Good news. Who are you again? I'm a mental projection from the future that only you can see. I came back to prevent you from becoming a monster. <laughs> Wait, is this a hidden camera thing? This is a story about redemption. Giving someone a second chance to really become their best selves. I guess putting our heads together does make sense. He's not only saving himself, he's actually saving the world. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from Studio B. One of the greatest BYU football defenders in program history, Jan Jorgensen, has endured an extremely challenging last year. Overcoming incredible adversity in his return to Provo to coach and on his return to the MMA mat. This is Deep Blue featuring Jan Jorgensen. I do know Janimal. The Janimal? <laughs> you go out on the field, you go out on the wrestling match, he'd kill you. He's kind of a jerk on the field. Yeah, Janimal. I love Jan. The way he was on the field and off the field, I would never have guessed that they were the same people. I wanted to be somewhere where my family could come to as many games as they wanted to come to. And I remember sitting down, and I narrowed down to three different schools, and I made a list of pros and cons of each place. And the only thing I could write down as a con for BYU was that I just had a personal dislike for BYU. And I looked at it, and I said, well, that shouldn't be enough to keep me from going there. And so. I decided to go to BYU. I played against BYU. I coached against BYU. I recruited against BYU. This home was not a BYU home. It was, BYU was kind of a dirty word. And we sat at that first game at Cougar Stadium and looked at each other and said, I can't believe we are sitting here in Cougar Stadium cheering for BYU. It's Jorgensen again. And like most, football ended for me before I wanted it to. So I was kind of just like, holy crap, what do I do with myself? Knew I wanted to coach. Wasn't sure if I wanted to jump into college coaching or whatever. I didn't know I was going to have to make any decisions like that. But it got to the point where I knew I had to choose between the two dreams. Keep fighting and get to the UFC and try to make my career there or leave that in start my coaching career. And just seeing the struggles that my friends had after leaving that, I didn't want to do that to my future family and put them at that situation. So I decided to, to start coaching college football. He moved away to go, he got into coaching, right? He, he coached at Helper High School, his old high school. Uh, he was the defensive coordinator at a small JUCO down in Orange County. And then obviously got the job at Snow College as well, and that's all after being a GA at, at BYU. This last year, probably calendar year starting from about now, has easily been the most difficult year of my life. Having a loss in our family, and it was just a very, very hard time. That was incredibly difficult. And on top of that, there were other things happening that made this year a very, very tough year. I was just kind of going through the, through the motions. Um, I love snow, but I was just surviving every day. I wasn't I wasn't doing my job with the passion and the love and the, that I normally do it with. And I needed a change of scenery. I needed something to happen. And so I'm very grateful for the opportunity that E and Kalani have given me to come back because that passion is back. And the coach that I am and the coach that I want to be, I'm back. And so it's been a big blessing. It was a long road for him to get back, uh, to be part of this staff. And I've seen kind of him go through a lot in the time between when he left 
his position as a GA to when he got hired back as an analyst. And given the the last year and a half of what Jan has had to go through, which no one should ever have to, it was really profound for me to see that good thing happen for him. And not just a good thing happen for him, but this good thing happened for him. So after going through that event and losing my son, there was a lot of emotions inside of me. And I needed to find a way to get him out. And so I decided I was going to take a fight. And training gave that to me. Jan's had events in his life that would cause anybody to have a dark side and having to deal with some of the things that he's had to go through over the past few years. And so that escape with mixed martial arts and doing that in a controlled manner is very healthy for him. I think it's healthy for anybody to do that type of stuff in a controlled manner, but especially for him. Besides his job and all that stuff, he's a good father. We're proud of him. We're, we're very proud of, of what he's done and what he's accomplished. And more to the point that he's a nice person and a good person. Jan is one of my heroes, and, and he always has been. I've loved seeing him grow and his example and his desire to take the stage that he's been given and help others. And I want BYU fans to know how special this guy is and how lucky you are to have him back as part of Cougar Nation. As much as I like to tease and mock Cougar Nation, it is the best place for him to be, and he is one of your best. So take care of him. Let us add uh, how grateful we are to have Jan Jorgensen back at BYU and part of the staff. 100%. And he went through something unbelievable with the loss of Truman last year. Mm. Just devastating. Um, but to know that BYU in some way has helped him through this process is awesome because everybody loves Jan Jorgensen. I've talked to multiple people from last night to now that have had interactions with Jan that say, he had no reason to be nice to me, but he was extremely nice to me, including one of my best friends who was on the team for like two days. He was like, Jan would talk to me. Love that. And no one else uh, needed to, but he was awesome. Yeah. We all love Jan. Yes. We all love Jan. Check out BYU and Utah State tomorrow night. Complete coverage on the radio with Cougar Pregame Live. Shep gets you started with that. Riley Nelson, Gregor Bell, Mitchell Jurgen, 6 Eastern on BYU Radio and the app. And up next, which current or former BYU quarterback will have the most touchdowns accounted for this weekend? Most, multiple options. BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. of competition it helps measure progress pushes us to improve and whoops it can be a whole lot of fun BYU TV has its own kind of competition shows where sportsmanship rules teamwork wins and good character triumphs I wasn't just gonna leave you there whether it's about families competing or life lessons being taught you'll want your family to see it together download the free BYU TV app today this is your guys' song. You deserve our goal. 50,000 books in the hands of children. Okay, and I can help. 
peace. Why do you do this? What do you get out of this? It needs hope, and you need to show that little bit of love. When you lay down your head. People come here one way, and they change while they're here. It was so great to be a part of it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. This program's on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps or subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan here in Studio B. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Maris, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Stacey Dales reports Saints head coach Dennis Allen says Taysom Mills getting QB reps. Part of the plan from the very beginning says it'll be uh, he'll be in a spot where they'll continue to get him reps there. So who will have more passing TDs this week? Zach Wilson, Taysom Mill, or Jacob Connor? Uh, Taysom Mill still the backup to Andy Dalton, who is the backup of Jameis Winston. So it's not going to be Taysom. Jacob Conover will be in the game, but he'll probably be handing the ball off because yeah. BYU's going to be up much. It's clearly Zach Wilson, Jerem. It, it is Zach, for sure. It's clearly Zach Wilson. What about this tweet from the Hype Train podcast showing what is believed to be no. the Utah State football equipment no. truck. There's no way this is real. Pulling out to head to Provo. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jerem, that's funny, does but no. Does any part of you believe no. this? Even like one oh. percent of you believe oh. this to be real? Yes, but no, this is a bad. This is photo. <laughs> no, way. sorry, that's not real. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Oh, that got uh, yeah, long laugh for me when I saw this this morning, and I'm laughing again now because it's fantastic. <laughs> we are farmers. Bump it up, 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 up. <laughs> Our question of the day. Unfortunately, not about the Utah State equipment truck. It is about BYU's quarterbacks, though. Is the BYU quarterback factory back? Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. And wouldn't you know it, it's the Hype Train Podcast. Oh, getting on a Twitter, lot of love. Who Hype responded to our question and said, it can't be back when you never left. Come on now. The quarterback factory has continued it's from can't. 1975 on with no, it, no interruptions. No, it hasn't. <laughs> it's nice to have two guys that obviously Zach's second pick starter in the league. There were Taysom three Hill. losing seasons from 02 to 04. There was 2017 as well. An abomination. Today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Goes to Jan Jorgensen. Uh, tremendous opportunity for uh, to hear from Jan and see what he's been up to and what he's been going through and. That's what Deep Blue is about, and we appreciate Jan opening up to tell us the story. Yeah, great. Uh, it's so cool to see how many people have responded to him on social media. Everybody loves Jan. Everybody Everybody like Jan Jorgensen, man. Our thanks to today's guests, Scott Gerard and Braden Cosper. Sorry to Dennis, we ran out of time, but you can go to BYUSN.com to get all the BYU Sports content. Yeah. For Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. Shout out to Bill August. We'll see you tomorrow for a game day edition of BYU Sports hey. Live from Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Go Cougs.